What is up, my friends? It has been a very long time since we've done chopping it up, and with me, I have. Who are you? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am Keith Shire. <laughs> Woo fit. So, Keith, awesome person, great story. He has like 15 different things that you should learn about him, but specifically, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna focus on. Uh, you you have. S sort of a past with depression, mm -hmm. some suicidal uh, thoughts and whatnot like that, right? Yes, sir. I feel like that's something I haven't personally gone through enough to actually give you any sort of weighted information or anecdotal, like, you know, uh, advice on that. LP before has dealt with depression in the past, a pretty severe depression. So I'm really excited about getting you on this Chopping It Up because yeah. I feel like you have an interesting perspective that a lot of people will benefit from hearing. Absolutely. You know? So really, I just, I, I kind of want to hear, um, like, when did your depression start? Um, what did it feel like? Mm -hmm. You know, what caused it? Just like, essentially, like, where did it start from? Okay. Um, let's see. It's, I can remember it starting from maybe, like, a, a very, very young age of grade school. I was, I was a very overweight kid. Mm -hmm. I was extremely over I mean I was like oh, well over 200 pounds like a fifth grader Wow. and uh, yeah I weighed more than I do right now as a fifth grader so Damn. No, that's stupid I was wearing double extra large fifth grade Wow. so uh, kids picking on you yeah yeah of course kids picking on you constantly yeah, no doubt. and that makes you uh, not want to be there around them fully and then when you are there you're like defending yourself you're mm -hmm. always so people are, the kids are dumb and they're like picking saying stupid things about your mom and so I'm I start my mom's like, don't be a punching bag. Mm -mm. So, so like, if they touch you, touch them back. Only harder. <laughs> and if uh, they say something to you, end it. That that was, was like, she's like, I don't, I don't want you going to school being a little yeah. punk, basically. Yeah. Well, that 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 also sets you on a road that you're not ready for because you start getting in this whole bullying mindset, and then, but you're really not happy about it. That's just something yeah. that's masking. Um, other things and, and at home um it wasn't always the easiest thing either um because it's like it was it was just my mom it was just me and my mom and she was doing everything she could to just support the house yeah. and um just busting it just 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 killing it working, just working, killing working. it just so she could uh so we could have a roof over our heads yeah and uh slowly but surely i was like getting sad because it's like i wasn't happy and I really don't know what like what it was like fully stemming from because my mom was giving me anything she wanted like I was a brat like I would be that kid kicking and screaming in the store like give me that ninja turtle yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're like mommy's little boy no <laughs> oh, I was totally mommy's little boy there's like uh, like an 18 year gap between me and my next brother wow. like a huge gap okay. so I'm this little brat baby getting anything he wants and then really I'm just wham I'm not happy but I, w I was slowly but surely getting sad and I was lashing out in other kids and then I stopped coming to school like it like through like when grade school went into middle school like you go from like just having year one teacher mm -hmm. just miss gilmore mm -hmm. oh and then you have like oh you have eight classes yeah, and yeah, then yeah. you have to get really into all these old peer groups i did not transition well oh, right 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 groups not at all oh, yeah i was and not a group person either no dude and i kind of I, com I completely shut down like i would not go to school for like weeks and it felt like when I finally went back, when one kid asked me, where you been? What, what you been doing? It felt like a million of them was asking me. Yeah. And I was like, I would just run. I would get out of there and I would like call my mom and be like, get me out of here. I want to go home. Yeah. And I kind of got through that in my middle school years, but it was just horrible because it would, it would be even worse when mm -hmm. I got home because I would just like not move. And it just felt like this, this, this wave, just like this, chain mail blanket was just laying on me and I couldn't move and I was just numb and I was scared and I didn't even know why but when you start missing all that school um, children's services gets involved in your life and you start um, having to jump through all these hoops because they like the teachers will send you tutors mm -hmm. like if you're not going to go through their traditional school and you don't want to get homeschooled or something they'll send tutors to your house you have to meet them at the library and they sent me a lot of weird freaking people mm -hmm. and trying to get that good mesh in there it's just like it was just making me hate life even more even more yeah, so and it's like, you're already dreading it in the yeah, first place and I, then they're forcing it into you right it's like i just want to be i wanted a normal life like everybody else did mm -hmm. like i didn't want to be i didn't want the cards that i had dealt. like my yeah. we were we were dirt poor be dead honest with mm -hmm. you and i've always have been but 
I didn't want that, and I didn't want to feel the way I felt. I wanted Joe Schmo's life over here. Yeah, yeah, big, yeah, nice yeah. house. Nice big, mom, big, nice dad. Oh, yeah. It's everything. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I didn't have that. I had my mom, my cats. Good times. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, and I wouldn't trade it for anything come looking back at it. But that was really, it was, it was a lot to process as a preteen and then a teenager. Absolutely. And those other kids don't understand that. The, the interesting to me thing to me is, I, I mean, I don't know your story, right? Like, yeah. We haven't talked about this yet. I wanted to save it yeah. exclusively for the camera. <laughs> but uh, I didn't know that it had started as a, as a child, like you mm. going growing as you go going older like growing mm. your depression as you're growing yourself mm -hmm. so that's a different like that's a different like you know a lot of people run into depression after they've gotten into their 20s or 30s and they've de gone through school developed their career whatever and then they go into to depression yeah so that's very interesting yeah i never really thought about being kind of like raised into depression it's not like your mom did anything wrong it was just like no. the i guess parameters the, the context you were in Basically, yeah, because like my mom, I, my mom had always struggled with depression, and she said her, her mom, like my grandma, had struggled with depression. So it runs the family. So it it's, looks like a pattern that had been running with the family, and it's not like something that people, okay, you're going to be depressed, little one. It's like not something that we want, but yeah. it's just like something that's kind of ushered in a little bit. Did did anybody uh, address it? Like, did your mom ever ask you, hey, are you depressed? Are you is something wrong? And there was never really a conversation like that to be had, just like that. I obviously I don't think my mom would ever wish that upon me or want that to be a thing but I, I it's 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 sometimes it's hard to recognize that in somebody when you are struggling with it yourself mm -hmm. because it's not something that just goes, goes away you just learn how to deal with it over time yeah and <laughs> and it, it would be a bit difficult to just ask somebody straight up hey are you depressed because then if they're mm -hmm. not then you're insulting them in a way I guess right uh, would do you think that would have been good it, it, it could have, uh, I guess it could have helped. I mean, it's kind of hard to say, I guess. Right? Yeah, I guess we'll, let's get, get in our flux capacitor and go back in time and, yeah, 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 <laughs> and, yeah. and do that. But at the same time, like when you're going, when I was jumping through all those hoops and cause you had to get like doctor's notes and stuff, Ugh. like they were diagnosing me like crazy. Like they started like giving me all this medicine oh, and I'm like the, worst, the medicine, it, nothing was like going away. Like you can write a prescription and tell a kid you, that you're basically nuts. Mm -hmm. clinically and I'm like no I'm not like this this is like real life yeah right you're here. like I'm me this is my life right you're gonna tell me that I'm living a stupid life or no. a crazy life and the only and the only thing that the medicine was doing was making me eat more which I didn't need because I was already a black hole for food and then I I got up to like 350 pounds as a 15 year old because wow. of like yeah. the ungodly hunger <laughs> yeah yeah and and I mean obviously we've we've heard the stories of <laughs> John and like all the other people mm -hmm. going through that time 14 through 18 that whole high school area oh my gosh with any sort of problem I mean mm -hmm. I had the acne thing he had the the you had the obesity thing like mm -hmm. any problem because no one has gone through their own life problems enough to develop empathy to yep. understand that other people have struggles and whatnot and appreciate them no. so it's just oh you're stupid because you're fat mm -hmm. oh you're stupid because you're you got the deformation or you got acne or whatever it is mm -hmm. that's terrible I hate that yeah, it's, it's the worst it's, it's the evil it's cruel <laughs> uh, you said so you said that depression felt like a chainmail depressed like it felt heavy like yeah. you, you had like armor on or something like you couldn't move a lot mm -hmm. what else what else would you describe depression as like what would you say it feels like a lot of people might be thinking hey I feel bad a lot mm -hmm. am I depressed is this maybe depression mm -hmm. you might need to go talk to somebody that knows what how to how to recognize choo -choo. It. like yeah. I'm not saying we should yeah, I'm not no, saying no. we're gonna diagnose <laughs> but I'm just saying what are some other like adjectives what are some other things that you're hmm. feeling when when you were depressed like for example like uh, it's like your mom's birthday or something like something where you should be happy mm -hmm. is that something that you would just smile but you don't even not even close to any sort of good emotion mm -hmm. it, it, like things like that it's almost like you'd be kind of like going through the motions because you just feel disengaged from the rest of the world like that that heavy feeling that comes upon you it's like something uh it's it's literally like a blanket that comes on you it's, it's kind of suffocating it's kind of comforting once you start getting used to it as well because like when you start recognizing that this is what's coming upon you at some point or another you're either going to choose to fight it or accept it and like now I, I can know the i can see the vital signs when it when the waves do come mm -hmm. and i can i can know what's happening but back then i would just I would completely disengage and I would um, be very like to myself um, more sad neg slash negative thoughts would be flooding your mind and you would just be more accepting of that back then um, 
you don't you feel like you feel like you feel like you're worthless. You feel like you're mm. just scum, scum of the earth. No one wants to talk to me. No, you're wasting people's time. You're wasting people's time. Why should I even say anything? It's just like oh, like that that woe is me feeling. That's not like 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 people like we make fun of. Like that is like how you really feel. Like you feel like woe is me. Like it sucks to be me. And I would. I would have gave up anything to, to not be me in that situation when that comes upon me. But, it, I mean, it's, 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 it's easy to look on the outside and be like, it's not worth it. Why, why would people kill themselves? Why would people have those sorts of thoughts? That's so selfish, blah, 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 blah. But when you're, when you're in that moment, you want nothing more but to escape it. Not have to deal with it anymore. Yeah. Not, not have to deal with it anymore. Yeah. And that's, that's why, like, when I was... 15, uh, yeah, right when I had a right when I turned 15 that's that summer because I turned my birthdays in May. Um, I try I tried to kill myself. I tried I tried to hang myself um, with a belt. There's like a there was like a little loop thing, plant hook in the living room, and I looped it and I I was getting ready to do it. I mean I was right there ready to start dangling and my mom walked in. Wow. And that was the most like that was the most terrifying thing I've ever seen. Like to see her dread and yeah. her eyes, it, like it, that made me want to live. That made me want to like completely stop what I was doing. Like it made it, it gave me hope because when you are under that wave, that that just that crushing blow of depression, you have no hope. There is no hope, even though you, it is around you. You don't feel it. And you were saying you mm -hmm. don't you don't care about yourself necessarily anymore. Mm -hmm. So if you can't care about yourself, mm -hmm. the next best thing would be to care about not hurting your mom. Yeah, I kind of I, I kind of I hear what you're saying right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that that could be one way that you could. I mean, I, I'm never gonna say that I'm telling you how to deal with what you're dealing with. Yeah, you know, but that is one way that you could look at it. Is mm -hmm. hey, if if I hate myself, there's nothing I can do by myself. At least I can make my mom's life better. Absolutely. Make my sister's life better. Yeah. Maybe I have a best friend. I want to make his life better. I wouldn't want to yeah. leave them with with the same woe. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy, man. That's yeah. crazy. So that was, you said 15, 16? That was, that was right when I was just turned 15 that, that I tried to do that. And then, uh, so what happened after that so in terms of like your depression and whatnot? How did you deal with it? Um, well. <laughs> I mean, your mom obviously knew at this point that something was Oh, on. my mom knew that something was majorly up at that point. But things kind of got really difficult after that because shortly after that, I got taken away from my mom. Oh, right. I got taken away from okay. my mom and I, and I got taken into the custody of the state until I was 18. So I was in, they first took put, took me in like a jail-like facility. Like I was just like, at a, I, was, I was a nice kid. I was, I've always been like a, that nice yeah. fat kid. <laughs> I really was. But when you just put somebody in jail, like they took me like four and a half hours away. And I was like, I just want to be home with my mom and my cats. Can we, can I please just be home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but I'm, I'm with all, like, these kids that were, like, from gangs and, like, that were, like, did bad things. And, like, I had to, like, literally fight for my life. <laughs> I felt like for my life. I had to fight every single day for, like, ten months. Damn. Until they put me in another placement, which was, like, the Christian Children's Home of Ohio. And that was, like, a more, like, a group home-like setting. But there were still a lot of interesting backgrounds there and a lot of very forced structure and i'm just like can i just please go home yeah like, I'm, I'm, i didn't do anything wrong besides miss school and you're treating me like a criminal right now yeah 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 so this it didn't help my depression it didn't help anything that they're diagnosing me with at all it, it actually started making me angry and yeah it's instead it, of numb and started like an anger thing yeah because like you're going you're, you're going through their program you're going through counseling yeah and you're you, I, I actually when i got to go to christian children's home i got to be back in high school so I had to start whole high school all over again. With no friends, right? But yeah, because you don't know anybody. Yeah, you don't know anybody. I mean, which you, is even harder it, again. It, it, it sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the people that do know you, they act like they don't know you. It, it was just, it was just the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. It was like you're a loner, and then you had to. I've literally made friends with the other loners, so we were all our little loner bunch. Yeah, the misfit bunch. <laughs> it, it was. Yeah. And things got better. I'm not gonna lie. Like eventually, I, I made some friends that are still lasting friends to this day. That's honestly, awesome. that's great. Um, but it was hard. Yeah. It was so difficult. Yeah, no doubt. And, like, people didn't want to be friends with the kid that's in placement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to ride the CCHO bus? Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't get to go to parties. I didn't get to have life. I didn't get to go to prom. I didn't get to do any of that stuff. Like, I went home after school, did my chores, did my work, went to bed by 8 o'clock every single day. Yeah. yeah. Super structured. Yeah. Hmm. So it's good times. <laughs> so, so that was uh, high school, and that, so it was, like, 18, 19 no, when was, you ended? Yeah. Uh, so... 
that so that was for years, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you were doing this kind of like structured, go back home, go right back to school. But, mm -hmm. uh, how did you feel at the end of high school? Were you still depressed? I, I was still extremely depressed. <laughs> Still very extremely depressed after high school. Um, it, 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 it honestly, it, it took up until when I, I mean, I got out of, I got out of high school, or I got out of high school, I graduated, I got out of the placement, I, get, I moved back with my mom. So there's there's a source of joy, there's something to cling yeah. to. Yeah, I got, for that first few months out, I mean, I was doing, I was trying to make up for lost time, to be mm -hmm. dead honest with you. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up making some really good friends that winter, that next winter, and I mean, I, ended up getting back, I got into church and I got saved and my life completely changed from that moment on. Like, um, I didn't, I can't say that like depression just like deceased. Yeah. Oh, because I mean, there's still waves that this happened. It still hits you now. Oh yeah. But like when I got in to church and I got in with a good group of friends, people mm -hmm. that would support me and that wouldn't judge me in the way that unconditionally supporting you. Absolutely. Oh, totally unconditionally yeah. support me because they knew I not was not in the face, not just here. No, like they actually it, do it, care it, about it, you. They would literally care that's a, about that's me. That's a that's an important feeling that I feel like a lot oh. of people just miss in their life. There yeah. are people like that around them, so they don't know what that feeling is. I never and I never had it okay. besides my mom and like a few friends. Yeah, like I didn't have like this overwhelming support with all these friends, and that's how I ended up going to college and. Oh, that's Cool, and, and and it really changed a lot just that little core friend group that's cool in Worcester so it was changed everything how old was this that was like uh, 18 19 18 19 yeah so, so it started getting better yeah and you started having your friends started mm. going to church and whatnot mm -hmm. were you still overweight absolutely <laughs> okay uh, so you hadn't started fitness yet yeah no <laughs> when, did the, when did the fitness come into the play um the fitness came into play I was uh um, third year in college. That's not always. That doesn't always mean you're a junior. In third year in college. <laughs> Did that you say that? No. You're like third of twelve years. <laughs> <laughs> We're on that long term plan. <laughs> but third year of college, um, I took a break because that's like, what am I even going to school for right now? Like, okay. what am I doing with my life? Like, yeah, yeah. so I took a break, and in that break on Thanksgiving weekend, me and my boy Corey, who had somebody I went to high school with, one of the one of the faithful, one of the long term. Yeah. Um. He was feeling kind of the same way what I was. He wasn't as overweight as me, but he was still feeling kind of chunky. He was still feeling like, I, can't, I need to do something with my life. And we just had that conversation one day randomly. We just randomly talked, we met up, um, and we're like, you know what? Let's go get a gym membership. Let's do this. Nice. And, Over this. And we went every single day for two years. Like, I don't think nice. we, we don't, I don't think we missed. We were doing like a thousand reps of abs every single day. I'm like, why, why, why would you do that? Why would you do that now? Don't do that. No, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> but um, that's what you do when you start. Oh, you went, we you went just hard. have your best friend and you guys figure things out yourselves. Yeah, oh, yeah. You're like, yeah, I want to hit my upper chest now. So you start doing <laughs> things you think are upper chesty. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. And you and your friends just figure things out slowly. It's mm -hmm. really fun. I, mm -hmm. I totally know what you mean. Having mm -hmm. that partner mm -hmm. makes it so that you, like, when you're thinking, oh, I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow. You text your friend, hey, what time are we going to the gym? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's not even like you're questioning because that person's going to ask you the same thing. They're expecting you and you're expecting them. So exactly. you have to go. You're pushing each other yeah, if you realize or not. When did you, like, what weight were you when you started somewhere around that? I was in the plus 300 range when I had just okay. started there because when I got out of the children's home and went to college and all that, you're trying to eat right <laughs> a, a little bit better than what you were. And I didn't have a car yet, so I was still walking yeah. all over the place. So at that time I was probably pushing 315. Okay. Ish. And then uh, and then you started lifting with your friend, make, yeah. making mistakes for that first year, being oh, stupid. First couple of years, yeah. Uh, we ne we never did leg day. We didn't know what that was, uh, and we didn't like we never did back day. I mean, for first two three years, no legs, no back. It was just bro workouts. Oh, yeah, hardcore. all the front muscles, all the oh, front muscles, absolutely. Baby. And we got our arms, we got our chest working. <laughs> oh, hardcore in our in our core, but. Um, I wish I could have that time back because of those, those, new, those new games. I know what you mean. Oh my gosh. Just utilize all those days much better. It would have been it so much more progression. Phenomenal. Right. I can't even imagine what I look like right, right. now. Right. But Would you say that, that lifting and all that helped with coping with the depression or at least like making it less prevalent in your life? Yes. Okay. Yes. Lifting, um, it's like that's like my outlet. Like when I'm angry, when I'm sad, when... I'm feeling even when I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. lifting um, in general, just that that release with your muscles and the breathing. It's just, it's a, it's a stress reliever. Absolutely. It's 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 a very a rewarding thing. Mm -hmm. Sounds like some people, I guess, their stress relievers going and getting wasted at the bar. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, 
but mine is I, I, I want I want to go to the gym and I want to interact with people there and that, and that culture and that and that's that's my kind of bar yeah well, yeah yeah to be that honest with you and it, it makes me feel good about myself when I see the progression that I mean where I've been to yeah. compared to where I am right now it's like it's it's, it's night and day yeah like I, I look at my face in those pictures I'm like that's a completely different person Absolutely. and that's not just on the outside that's like in here I'm I'm completely different mindset yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, when you're when you're depressed again like I don't, I don't fully know but when yeah. you're depressed I, I imagine you feel mm. like everything's stagnated you're like I'm not making progression I'm not mm -hmm. my career's not moving anywhere I'm not moving anywhere mm -hmm. things like that so I imagine being able to look at yourself mm -hmm. three months ago there's yeah. there's no way you can you can look at the picture and say I don't I haven't changed at all right even if you still feel like oh man I haven't done anything in my body if you look at a picture four months ago and you have been working out and making progression oh, you're yeah. gonna be like okay absolutely I know that I have made some sort of progression yes maybe the, I, I don't know but no. I'm just saying maybe they can start triggering some sort of feeling like it's a, you know I can do things I can make things happen absolutely that and that pro, that's progression that's like something like I if you're depressed, if you mm -hmm. struggle with depression, that's something that you have to cling to. Depression. Because you don't have anything else to really cling yeah. to. Like you were talking about before, like you might not feel great about yourself, but you have like a kid, you got your husband or wife or yeah. something that you're doing it for. Like, I don't have any of that. I got I got, I got my mom, definitely, and now I got Abby and I got I got my kitty cats. <laughs> <laughs> I love cats though. <laughs> um but you get you have to clean, you have to have some sort of rope that you're, you're making progress like because that. if you don't if you're not pulling yourself pulling yourself up out of that hole then you're gonna forever be in there so like I have to like look at my progression mm -hmm. and just who and, and, and speaking it on my body and just and just everything because if I'm not constantly getting better even if it's just a little bit if I'm not constantly yes. moving forward then I'm gonna fall back into that. And I don't ever want to be that again. And I'll never forget where I was. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, that that is what's motivating me almost more than anything to keep moving forward. I like that. I like that. Yeah. I think I think it's a, uh, you kind of make a point right there without even making it. Uh, like alcoholics, if mm. like for example, like my, my father uh, was an alcoholic mm. and it's been 27 years sober. Mm. But like he will still never get around alcohol. He won't if there's a bottle in the house. He'd be like get it out of the house don't mm. you know whatever it is keep alcohol completely away from me people will like mm. bring him he's a mechanic so they'll bring him a present for christmas and then it'll be like a bottle of wine you know mm. like i'm sorry I, I don't want that even near me yeah i mean he knows he's not gonna do it he's strong he's done it for a long time but mm -hmm. just being a smart person he knows that somewhere in there mm -hmm. there's a little rice in his brain that's like yeah, that little piece still enjoys drinking and he's right. just smart enough to keep that away from himself absolutely so i i think you you, you kind of made the same point uh mm. You have to keep reminding yourself that you, you know, depression is something that you came from. Mm -hmm. Maybe you still deal with somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's still available to come to your life. Totally is. So yeah. make sure that you are progressing and you're not yeah. just stagnating. Yeah. You're not like offering the right context for depression to creep back into your life. Yeah, because it's a, it, it knocks at your door when you when you least expect it. Because I could just be sitting there. And I could just, I, th I think everything's just, oh, happy, go lucky, and fine. And just, I can, I can sense those, that, that those waves. That's, that's, that's the best way I could describe it. Just yeah. like crashing waves, just all of a sudden, just come on you. And I'm just like, uh oh, <laughs> I yeah. gotta get up out of this situation. And a lot of times, I can get up out of that situation, and I can get up if I get up out of my house, and I can just go walk around a Walmart or just go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Get up, and getting, getting up out of my house, and just separating myself from whatever was happening right there. Not dwelling. In yeah, that, in that moment. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, getting my mind off it. Go play some video games. Don't yeah. go do something to make me happy or something. And don't don't run the food because I'll 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 eat some cupcakes and some pies <laughs> into the, into the darkness. Like it's just horrible. Yeah, horrible. <laughs> yesterday yesterday someone came up because of Halloween they came up with a little candy bar uh, <laughs> and you're like, this is oh, the first no. candy bar I've had in six decades. <laughs> John's leading me astray. John, if I go buy a candy, I was looking. They had candy right where, where I'm staying and they had they had that big dish of candy. I'm like, I wasn't even tempted until John gave me that freaking. Snickers, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's how it works, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta that's, get away from it. That's so funny, man. Yeah. That's funny. So, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I just I wanted to kind of cover mm. your entire story. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that hearing other people, their story and how they've gone through it, how they've dealt with it, whether you know they dealt with it perfectly or not, mm -hmm. I feel like it's even if you've heard the story before, you know, you've heard of someone else going through depression, you've heard someone losing weight or whatever. Yeah. It, it just brings such like a real feeling to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when you read a book or something, 
it's not quite the same as if you see the picture of that person in the book. Right, you know that it's actually, it's happened, or it's been happening, like it's authentic. Like there's, it's right there. there's this person Boom, right here. that's a story. This, <laughs> living in Ohio, yeah. right now, mm -hmm. and you hear, you've, everyone's heard your story now. Mm -hmm. I, think that's, I think that's valuable. Um, is there any last tip, any last advice, anything that you would say for someone who is either facing, you know, heavy depression, they know they're depressed, or, or someone who's, you know, feeling they might be going into depression any anything at all hmm if you're going <laughs> that's a big question <laughs> that, that's, like, a, that's a ginormous <laughs> question <laughs> I mean, yeah answer it however you want to and don't feel bad we'll about get it, to it <laughs> um if you're dealing with depression first off you have to realize that you're not alone um because that is like that, that that's the first thing that comes along inside of your brain inside of your heart like you are you are this and you are that. You're being you're being accused over and over and over again, and you you feel like you're the only one. So why do you matter? The fact is, is that you do matter, and that you are not alone, and that there are millions upon billions of people dealing with the exact same thing that you are. The one thing that can really help is to like be open about it. And I'm not like being, I'm not talking about like a, an attention seeking way. Like I'm so depressed. Like, you know, the little Facebook statuses, little sa sad faces. Not the right way to do it. No, no. Like literally like have people pray for you. Like literally or like go and tell somebody like have an accountability partner or have somebody like that you can trust to like when you can recognize those feelings that are coming upon you, you that you can text them, you can call them, you can go to their house and that they will drop whatever it takes to just bring some joy to your life it, whether it's a cupcake whether it's playing laser tag whether it's going outside and just enjoying the air the rain or whatever it is like you have to get out of your situation you have to trust sometimes in the in the somebody to help you because it comes so hard it's you can't always just help yourself get up out of that hole like i'm i'm obviously i'm progressing with my rope every single day but i'm fueled by people like Brian and I'm, I'm fueled by people around me that I know that are legitimately my friends they legitimately care about me and like they'll welcome me with open arms and you have and there's if you want to believe it or not those people are in our lives I mean there's homeless people in their community they have those people in their lives yeah. but you just have to open your eyes and cling to the and cling to that because that will sometimes it'll actually save your life and um, people get in that mindset and like, oh well, they don't know. They don't want. They don't need to help me. Not not me. Yes, you, because you do matter. You do have a plan and purpose for your life. And I mean, you could be doing great and amazing things one day. And there could be. There's a. There's a lot just right there on the cusps if you just keep fighting because this it's it's a, it's a battle. And in, in a freaking battle, you're not going to just uh, oh give up. Had had enough tap out i mean there's some people that will do that but why don't you, you you can't do that there's there's breath in your lungs there's hope in your life and you can do absolutely anything you put your mind to i can't believe that i'm in freaking san diego right now <laughs> like if i would have ended my life and i was 15 none of this awesomeness would be going down right now i i wouldn't be in the presence of such a, a gracious sexy man right here <laughs> <laughs> but no but for real there's there's so yeah. much there's so much ahead of absolutely. you absolutely and uh you, you have to do whatever you can, cling to, onto somebody's hand and cling mm -hmm. onto this mm -hmm. table as mm -hmm. you're progressing forward. Absolutely. So that, that's my message for any of y'all out there. That I love that. Can, can I really like relate. what you just said. Yeah. Reach out to people that you know care about you. Yeah. Those people will, will be there for you. Even if it's one person. Yeah. 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 Don't reach out on Facebook. Those people will make you feel worse about yourself yeah. ab about asking for help. Yeah, it's another hole. <laughs> it's yeah. another hole to get in. It's yeah, a like big that. slippery slope. I like that advice, man. Yeah. All right. Well, there's Wu Fit Keith Shay. Yeah. Um, his link will be literally the first thing in the description below. You guys will. I mean, you, you, they've heard this video. Maybe they don't know who you are, so this is who they know right now. When you go watch this video, you're gonna be like, "This guy was depressed." Like, <laughs> at what point was he depressed? Like, I saw a different video. There was like his doppelganger twin. <laughs> like, I don't know anybody else who's who's as smiley and goofy as I am, man. When hey. I see you at expos, you're always like, no. Heck yeah, it was, hey. it was the best thing ever. <laughs> I know from the first moment we met too, it, yeah. it was just like that. It was so cool. I remember, I was so yeah. stoked. I was like, this guy's cool. Yeah. I like this guy. I'm gonna I, remember. I and almost then, didn't come over to you. Really? I, that was like the worst thing because I saw you there and I was like, oh, those 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 Canadian guys were in front of me and they were like doing the Bazinga thing. And, oh yeah. And then uh, 
I was like, ah, oh, that's Brian Turner. That's cool. But I don't know what just turned me around to come over to you, but I'll, I'm so glad that I did because you're like yeah, one of the man. freaking coolest people I've ever met in my life. I appreciate life. it, man. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I just remember being like, I like that guy. I was like, LP, mm-hmm. you need that. that guy's cool, right? Uh-huh. All right, cool. And the next time we saw you, it was like instantaneous. Absolutely. Just because of that, like, that fiery personality. Mm. I really like you. Mm. You guys should check him out. Seriously, I think you're going to love his personality. He's got a lot of good stuff to tell you guys. He's been through a lot of important pivotal moments in his life and I, th- I feel like he's got a good story to tell you guys and he, I feel like there's a good um, there's a good message that comes with your channel hopefully you know positivity That's weight plan. loss yeah progression Get some motivation up in there yeah yeah man I love it so yeah. check out his channel guys I'd really appreciate that please do I hope you guys enjoyed this chopping it up Ohio to California connection I thought that was real cool man I really yeah. appreciate you coming out here yeah I, I really uh, it's interesting i have to go back i have to leave this paradise right here it's like 50 degrees over there oh yeah huh yeah (laughs) it's all all like 75 and sunny right just just chilling (laughs) and a park with green grass behind us oh my goodness (laughs) it'll be cool though you know, I miss my cats, Miss. I miss you, girl. <laughs> Text me when you get back to Ohio. Let me know how it is. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Share it with somebody who might be interested in this sort of a story, this sort of an idea. If you're not subscribed to me, make sure you subscribe to me. If you're not subscribed to Keith, please go over and subscribe to my friend Keith. Show him support for the next couple of months. Get that content going. Get him excited. Yes, just sir. like you guys do for me all the time. I really appreciate that. Thank you guys for checking out the video. I'll see you guys later. Team Beyond the Week. Lift heavy or die, Myron! Yeah!